I want to share with you eight points of endurance, eight points that are important for you being able to continue and persevere during times of difficulties. If it's times of personal crisis, national crisis, times that you'll, you'll need to reevaluate where you're at. Sometimes you'll reevaluate and realize it's time to change. I know that happened in my life at different times. If it be in, uh, if I wanted to be in, in music or if I wanted to continue playing baseball, there's a time in my life where both those things came to an end and I had to look at reality and realize let's move on. It's time to move on. But also there's times where you're going to face times of crisis where you need to endure. You need to persevere. You can't be scared. you got to understand that these are times to make decisions and people like you are going to need to take the forefront and take a stand. I'm thinking of examples of Elijah, the first point. Elijah was faced with a crisis and he had a chance to stand for the truth, but instead Elijah ran away. He did not stand, he ran, and the Lord met him and asked him, what are you doing here? It was a time where God told him there were 7,000 people that had not given up, that had not bowed their knee, and they were waiting for leadership. They were waiting for someone like Elijah. But instead, Elijah, who could have been their leader, could have been the one who gave them direction, he was hiding himself. He had ran away. Do not run away. Stand and persevere. There are more people that are standing and waiting to looking for truth than we realize. We are not alone. You are not alone. Your job is to persevere until the end, standing with the truth. The second thing is that we need to teach truth, continue to teach truth. In times of crisis, we don't want to just teach answers. We just don't want to teach opinions. We want to teach truth. We want to teach truth before and after the crisis and during the crisis. So when people have the chance to hear truth, they'll have the ability to have a foundation to be able to think and evaluate. We want to teach to understanding, not teach to form an opinion. Teach for understanding so people can make their own decisions, having heard, used, and understood the truth. Stop teaching answers and opinions and start teaching the truth. Number three, do not respond to the wind. In Ephesians 4, Paul talks about the wind and, and the waves of teaching and the doctrines that come and go. Uh, do not just be teaching to the specific issue that is current. Paul also talks about teaching to tell Timothy to be ready to preach in season and out of season. In other words, when people are listening, when they're not, when they're asking questions and when they're not, the truth is going to be presented. If you just answer all of the issues, as soon as the issue changes, people are lost again or you are lost again. You must hear the truth, understand the truth, and be ready because the truth is never going to change and the truth is always going to be something that is applicable. Number four, do not seek government assistance. Government assistance is not anything the church or the truth needs. When I say church, we're talking about the church that is committed to the truth. The church of Jesus Christ, the universal body of believers. We're not always talking about the institution of the church because there's many churches that have already sold out to a variety of other things besides the government. We're not talking about that. Even the Bible addresses churches that are true and churches that have sold out. The truth and the church will be able to stand alone. They do not need government assistance. The truth can stand by itself. The truth needs to be proclaimed. It can sustain itself. That is the good news. The truth can sustain itself. It doesn't need something or someone to come and prop it up. It will stand alone. Now, the next point, heathenism cannot survive on its own. Paganism, heathenism, uh, atheism, things that are philosophies that are not true, they cannot stand alone. They must have some kind of support, such as government support. If it's evolution, if it's uh, the postmodern philosophy, if it's atheism, these will all collapse under their own weight because they are not true. They are going to need a government, a, a, an educational institution to prop it up, to promote it, because once you pull out any kind of props, it will collapse under the weight of its own falsehood. So, the truth does not need assistance. Heathenism will need assistance. The truth in the church, just like when Jesus talked about the gates of Hades, the church will have the gates of Hades come against it, but it will not prevail against the truth. The truth will stand alone. Number five, an interesting point. Schools are not divine institutions. The family is a divine institution. You fix the family, you fix the school. 
You have a corrupt family, you corrupt the school. If it's a public school, if it's a Christian school, if it's a church school, if it's a private school, you will corrupt the school with a corrupt family. If you have broken families, broken marriages, and broken individuals who need fixed, if the marriage is not developed correctly, if the individual is not individually responsible, if the family is broken, the school is not going to be able to fix these divine institutions. The school would have to have a family, a responsible individual, intact marriages for the school to continue to be successful. So do not look to the school to be a divine institution. The school can be a government institution. The school can be something that is used to educate uh, in, in a society. But do not confuse the school with a divine institution. The school is only as good as the divine institutions. Good families make good schools. Corrupt families produce bad schools or corrupt schools. Number seven is going to be this. Is rapid change creates polarization. Rapid change is good for a moment because it makes the, the, the contrast very clear. A rapid change for a moment in time, if it's your own life, if it's your nation's life, a rapid change will make the truth obvious for a moment or at least a great contrast to the different opinions. And there'll be a moment in time where the rapid change will help people be shaken to reality and readjust their ways. This is what is nice about a rapid change. It polarizes, causing people who are looking for truth to see it and gravitate towards it, and people who do not want truth to shut their eyes and go further into the darkness. So rapid change can bring about positive change, if we're willing. Again, it's a corny example. It's used multiple places, multiple times. I, I've used it for years. I don't even know if it's scientifically true, but it's the frog in the boiling water. If you have, they say in this illustration, if you have a frog in lukewarm water, it will just sit there. If you start heating the water, remember, this is an illustration. I don't even know if it's true. I've read information that I haven't tried it myself. I've read information that this isn't the way it would really act. But the point is, in this illustration, if you just heat the water up slowly on a frog, it will just sit there until it boils. But if you drop it in hot water, it will notice the difference and immediately try to get out. It's, it's, I don't know if it's true with the frog or not, but it's definitely true for human nature. It's definitely true for human nature. Forget that illustration and know this is true. If you shock human nature with a great change, they will recognize the problem. They'll recognize clearly this is not normal, and they'll respond. If you make changes gradually, lull them to sleep, you put human nature, just let it gradually drift away, decline, it will continue to decline into deeper and deeper levels of perversity without even being shocked. Now that, that's human nature. And finally, number eight is in the face of hardships. Continue to teach the truth. Continue to promote the truth, even if it becomes hard. Right now, in our culture, we're free to promote the truth. We're free to teach truth. So why quit now? Keep going. Because the time will come in some cultures, maybe in our culture someday, where you will be persecuted for teaching the truth. Even then, it's not time to stop teaching and preaching, proclaiming the truth. Even in the face of persecution, if you're committed to it, you will still live, teach, promote the truth because you know this is eternal. So in the face of hardship, if you're free, keep teaching the truth. Do not run like Elijah. If you're facing persecution, you can't compromise. You still have to teach the truth in the face of, face of some kind of persecution. Those are eight principles that I think are important. I wrote those things down 10 years ago. Uh, and use them for my own life and my own personal crisis when I am reevaluating myself, I've come to this conclusion. There are some things I need to leave behind. It's, they, the time has come uh, for them to be left behind. They've served their purpose. But there's also been times where I've reevaluated myself as far as the truth, as far as Bible teaching, as far as my ministry, my calling, the desire to teach the Word of God. Sometimes it gets hard. Sometimes it gets confusing. But these are eight things I refer to when... I'm faced with those, if you want to say, personal crisis or times of self-doubt. This is no time to run like Elijah. This is a time to stand, present the truth. I will continue to teach the truth. If it's applicable to the issues, 
if it's not applicable to the issues. I'm not teaching issues. I'm not teaching opinions. I'm trying to teach the truth of the Word of God. If it fits your, your issue, that's good. If it doesn't, that's not the point for teaching the truth. We're not trying to give you all the answers. I'm trying to give you the truth of the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the situation God puts you in will lead you and help you explain the truth or apply the truth to your situations, to your issues, help you form your attitudes and your opinions. If you have the truth as a foundation, you will not have to be switching your opinions and, and switching your opinions on issues. You'll be able to stand firm and be able to understand and explain why you think what you think, why you believe what you believe, and why you do what you do. If the issue changes, you can remain constant. You can remain firm because your foundation is on the eternal truth.